What's up idols? It's CC Lesson 3. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. As you can see, I am in a different location. Yeah, uh, family reunion. <laughs> so I'm home in the States. I saw something the other day and I've been wanting to talk about this for days now. So you guys know Hyanna, how she's like not really popular right now because of the decision, you know, the person she's choosing to be betrothed to allegedly still just rumors at this point but i don't think as of now they've come out and denied anything yet so it seems to be true i don't know and you know regarding the burning sun scandal did you guys know that as of march of this year everyone in prison and connected to the scandal is free from prison completely out on their own i'm going somewhere with this i swear to you i thought it would be nice to just not nice I thought it'd be important and necessary to sit down and talk about where the perpetrators are now and to make sure this info stays fresh in people's minds because I don't want people to forget about what they did. I don't want them to return back to normal life, like lesson learned, because clearly they have not learned their lesson. We're about to talk about what they're doing these days, what they're doing now, and you see it's still what they did before they went to prison. But before we do dive in, I want to invite you guys to check out my Patreon because I just uploaded a fresh story time, and it's about a girl who took a trip with her friends to Seoul. She met this great guy who was defending her from an a-hole and uh they had a very good night together and now they're in a relationship together and let me just show y'all a clip and we all hung together a few times it led to us being close like really close the tension was definitely starting to build between us and it was insane i knew i had to have him before i left korea so let me tell you how that happened the girls definitely knew that we wanted to see each other and spend time alone together they were definitely the perfect wing women, that's why they're my friends. So they agreed to go out for one night and leave us alone to spend sexy time together. They absolutely instigated our whole situation. They wanted me to get laid. And they didn't want me at his place or at some sketchy hotel because they were well aware of the spy cam porn epidemic in Korea. They insisted we do whatever we want and whatever we do, do it at our place. I honestly preferred that too though. So while the girls are getting ready to go out, I'm getting ready to stay in. The girls said they'd be gone until 6 a.m. ish when the train started running again, which was plenty of time for us and I was so grateful to them. Finally, my boy came in and he arrives as my girls are heading out. They're like, so if you want to see that story in depth, please check out my Patreon. Also, I know a lot of you guys ask about learning Korean, if I have any tips for learning Korean. I have something very exciting to tell you. Now y'all know I don't take sponsorships very often at all. Like, when's the last time you saw me promote something being sponsored on my channel? Back in 2014 when I first decided I'm moving to Korea and I want to learn Korean before I go. I found this website called howtostudykorean.com. It is my go-to. I like howtostudykorean.com and I genuinely like this. I used it before. I was even a YouTuber. I have truly felt like howtostudycorean.com is a hidden gem, a great, massive, underrated hidden gem for people who wanna learn Korean. Whenever we talk about, oh, what do you use? It's always the same. It's Rosetta Stone, it's Duolingo, it's High Native, it's Hello Talk even. Talk to me in Korean, but nobody ever talks about howtostudycorean.com. This has been my favorite for 10 years now, literally. Oh my God, it's 2024, it's been 10 years. So he reached out to me to tell me that he has a sale until July 31st. All of his workbooks are in sale. For those who are interested, if you use the code LESSON3, you can get another $5 off. These workbooks go really well with each lesson. It literally teaches you everything from Hango, the very beginning, up to more complex concepts. He does such a good job at breaking this stuff down. Like I can't recommend him enough. Everybody who has ever asked me oh how do you study korean what do you recommend i have always said how to study korean.com since 2014 since anyone started to ask me so check out the link in the description use my code if you want to get a discount and uh we'll be well on our way to have some new korean speakers out there right so for this video not so cheery one of the things that inspired me to make this video is the bbc just did a documentary like two months ago about the burning sun and even though the burning sun happened in 2019 it's been a while we need to keep talking about it. I'm gonna keep talking about it and I'm gonna keep bringing it up because I don't want people to forget that this happened. Especially this year, given the fact that everyone who was sentenced and prosecuted in the Burning Sun scandal as of March of 2024 are now out of prison and they're free to live their lives and they have not learned their lessons clearly. I think one of the reasons I really wanted to talk about this is because though there was like the big three, the people who were prosecuted and imprisoned, Jung Jun Young, Che Jung Hoon, and also Sung Lee, of course. What's annoying is in 2019, when all this was becoming public, you know, they seemed so shameful and so sorry, they were retiring from the spotlight, but now you have them all trying to make a comeback and just go back to living their lives like we forgot what happened. I think seeing headlines that Hyuna was set to marry Young Yoon Hyung, I do know that he had a connection to the Burning Sun scandal because even though he wasn't implicated or imprisoned or anything, 
being prosecuted. He knew about the chats and he knew what was going on and he did nothing to stop it, allegedly. And what really makes that particularly fucked up is if you saw the Burning Sun scandal, you saw that Guada was like a really big tool to getting these creeps brought down and prosecuted. Now, personally, I've always been one of these people where it really bothers me when people get really involved in idols and celebrities' personal lives and everything. So this makes me uncomfortable to say because I feel a bit hypocritical, but it really bothers me that they're together. And one of the reasons it really bothers me that Hyuna and Young Jun Hyung, why can't I remember, ever remember that name? It bothers me that they're together, particularly because Hyuna and Guada were very good friends. She was really close with the FT Island guy and she got him to give the identity of a cop that was helping the Burning Sun get away with their scandals to help name him to this reporter. I didn't know she did that. She was also a victim of mocha, something in the West we would call like revenge porn or like being recorded and filmed without your knowledge and is usually explicit and sexual in nature. There was footage of her scene on her knees begging her boyfriend to not release those images of her to the public. So she helped bring the Burning Sun scandal down and we know that a few months after that in late 2019, she took her own life and Hyuna and her were good friends. So it's really unfavorable that Hyuna is dating this guy. And the reason that this really bothers me, many reasons, but one of the things is like, it's annoying and frustrating seeing these guys go back to their normal lives. And it's also incredibly frustrating because we know about the big three with the whole Burning Sun scandal, but there were a lot of people behind the scenes who knew about it and didn't get in trouble at all for not reporting it. Like there's been some speculation that even was Zico knew something about this because he would call it Jung Jun Young's golden phone. And when this came out in that interview, the look that he gave Zico, like, shut the fuck up. I'd be looking at Zico with a side eye if I were y'all and this dude about to marry Hannah, for example. And even that cop who helped cover up a lot of the Burning Sun scandals, whatever these members were up individually, completely acquitted. Justice. But like I said, as of March of this year, all of them are out of prison. Did you know that seung is trying to open more clubs again? Did you know that Jung Jun Young was seen out in the clubs kissing girls? And did you know that Che Jung Hoon is preparing for a musical comeback? I just find it sick because most of their fans are women. And you've seen these chats by now, right? You've seen how they talk about these women, like they're toys and disposable and silly and just fun. So first I wanna give you guys a little bit of a refresher for what they did, what their sentence was like and what they're doing now, the big three anyway. Let's start with Jung Jun Young because he's like the reason this all got brought out there. I remember back in 2016, I was getting ready to go to Korea and I was binging a lot of Korean television, a lot of Korean movies while sending away my applications and getting all the paperwork done, getting myself more excited about, oh my God, I'm about to be living in Korea. So I started watching the show called Two Days, One Night. And I started on season three because it was the most recent season. And there was a guy named Jung Jun Young on there. And a lot of girls loved him. He has no problem getting girls. He's a very popular guy. My favorite was Cha Tae Hyung, but a lot of people really liked him. So he was really popular. So it was really big news when, was it like October or November 2016? His girlfriend or ex-girlfriend came out and said, I'm reporting the fact that my boyfriend recorded me without my knowledge and my consent. And I'm scared he's gonna release this or share this around with his friends and his people he knows. So because of that, all of his activity was halted. He wasn't on the show anymore. And I remember the vibe around that. A lot of people were sympathetic towards him. They felt like, oh no, the media and the police made him look like such a bad guy when all the, him and his girlfriend can do whatever they want in private. They didn't find anything in their investigation into that because they never actually looked through his phone. If they looked through the messages and deleted files, they probably would have found something and it wouldn't have taken three years for the chats to come out publicly. It was also revealed in the BBC documentary, but the reporter who first reported on that, she was receiving a lot of hate, a lot of blame from his fans. Can you imagine defending someone for, for what he did? What he <laughs> Oh God, this is why it's really important to not jump to conclusions, to not throw hate out there or love, blindly defend someone when you don't know the full story. So yeah, I remember he wasn't on Two Days One Night from, I, I wanna say it was like October or November of 2016 until like 
February or March of 2017 because I remember I was in Korea and everybody's like, oh my God, welcome back to the show, Jung Jun Young. This is so great. And he's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do better from here on out. Did it? Fuck you. Sorry, that wasn't professional. So yeah, we know in these chats, the chats also all took place from 2015 to 2016. So the girlfriend saying he filmed me matches up even on the timeline. And again, I can't go into depth on YouTube, but you guys know what was in those chats. You know how they talked, what they did, what they admitted to, what they said. For everything that he was charged with and convicted of, he only got six years. But because he wrote a letter expressing remorse, he got it reduced to five, which means as of March of 2024, he's a free man. And right now, he was last seen a few weeks ago, I believe, in Paris, in the club, making out with a girl. Tong Jun Young was reportedly spotted in Lyon, France. He was recently released after serving a prison sentence for sexual offenses. On July 8th, the netizen shared a photo online revealing Tong Jun Young. He had long hair and was sporting a beard. According to the netizen who posted the photo, Tong Jun Young was at a bar trying to flirt with women and ask for their Instagram. He told them he was planning to open a Korean restaurant in Lyon. He reportedly introduced himself as Jun and claimed to be a famous Korean singer. Tong had told the others he was going to Switzerland that day and Belgium the next day. Another netizen shared a French person's experience. That person had encountered the singer in a club in Lyon. Their drink order got messed up and they had decided to just give it away to the others. Right then, Chong Junyong reportedly approached the group, offering to take the drinks and struck up a conversation. The disgraced singer previously attempted to open a restaurant in Paris in 2018, but the plan fell through after he was revealed to be one of the key members of the Burning Sun scandal. Tong Jun Young was sentenced to five years in prison for gambling women and distributing illegally filmed videos 11 times in a group chat back in January and March 2016 in Hongcheon, Gangwon Province, and Daegu, respectively. He was released this past March after serving his full term in jail. Growing up, he did have a pretty like international upbringing. I believe he was born in like Malaysia or Indonesia. He grew up in France and China. Like he's he's been out there. So him going back to France is no surprise to me because he couldn't show his face in Korea right now. I just feel like when a guy has a band called Drug Restaurant, we should not be too surprised. Now the FT Island guy gearing up for his musical comeback. On March 14th of 2019, he retired from the music industry because of these allegations. Understandably, who's gonna wanna support you when you're going through this? So it's better just nipping the butt, I quit. You can't fire me, I quit. He faced allegations of being involved with bribery, sharing illicit videos, pictures, and he was also in those cacao chats with Jung Jun Young. So in November 2019, he was found guilty of rape. He was actually accused of gang raping a woman in Daegu along with Jung Jun Young. So although he was initially sentenced to five years, he later got it reduced to like two and a half. And in January 2024, he announced plans to resume his music and make a grand musical comeback. Aren't we all excited for that? If y'all go out and buy this man's music after what he did, I don't know you. I'm going to keep bringing this up because I don't want people to forget about this. When you have such a light sentence, you're likely to just reoffend because <laughs> what's the harm? And now Sung Lee, he thinks he's slick because he actually got like the lightest sentence of all of them. And he did this strategically because right around the time he was caught, it was almost time for his military enlistment, right? So the military courts tend to be a bit more lenient on these sort of things because it's not like a military offense. So he only got 18 months. It was supposed to be three years and it became 18 months later. Notice how they all got reduced sentences. Ain't that crazy? So in March of 2019, he left Big Bang. He retired from the music industry as you would because who's gonna support you? He was charged with sexual bribery, embezzlement, and he was convicted in 2020. And during the sentence reduction meeting or whatever, he said, I will reflect on my actions. And he was released in February of last year. Some of you guys may know that I was in Hong Kong from March to May of this year, and um, so was Sung Lee. You know how he said he'd reflect on his actions, right? Homeboy is about to open more nightclubs. He's planning to open some in Cambodia and Hong Kong, and that's all that we know of so far. He's making a lot of live appearances, and he's discussing Big Bang like they're all cool, and he name drops them a lot. If you go to a Sung Lee club, you are a fool. <laughs> I don't want anyone supporting this man's anymore. Like none of them. I'm sorry. I'm petty. It would be different if they had an actual proper substantial punishment, but they all got off light, dude. This just happened in 2019. They're all out of prison. They're all trying to go back to what their life was like pre-prison, which is insane to me. The reason this bothers me so much, having such a light sentence is 
If you rob a store and you're just given a warning, aren't you likely to rob the store again? Like if you're not properly punished, what's to stop you from reoffending? And to think last time the only reason they got caught was because some guy reported abuse and it was caught on CCTV and that led them to investigate, oh, maybe we should see what else is going on in this club. I remember talking about this um, like 2021 and the amount of people who would still defend Sungri made me nauseous. <laughs> if you can defend someone who thinks so poorly of a whole group of people and sees them as toys. Sungri was even on video saying like, oh, you know, it's no big deal. My people will, will rally around me. They'll come to my aid. Like he just knew he was untouchable. Brother, when I found out that Sungri was about to open more clubs, <laughs> I almost jumped out the window. I just feel like this year they're all doing the most. I don't know why they said, okay, 2024 is going to be our reset. Let's wait till everyone's out of prison and then we'll just move on like, like we didn't do what we did. Like I said, FT Island dudes making a musical comeback. I'm going to be so mad if y'all buy his music. I'm just saying that now. <laughs> so he's trying to open more clubs again. And Jun Young's out here in the clubs again. Like, bruh. Bruh. It just scares me because sure, in Korea, everyone knows who they are, what they look like, and what they did. But outside of Korea, some people may be unaware. And the fact that he even introduces, he, we know him as Jung Jun Young, right? He introduces himself as Jun. Just Jun. He drops the G. <laughs> no G knew me. <laughs> I just want people out there to be aware of who these guys are and never forget, because if you see them, run. run. Seeing people like Zico get away with knowing it, but not doing anything about it. Seeing Hyuna's future husband know what he knew, not do nothing, and get away with it. Just, it makes me sick. All of it does. And in that BBC documentary, there was a girl who experienced a night of blacking out in the club and waking up in a bed and begging a guy to let her go trying to fight him off of her and she says she knows she's never going to get justice but she wants to keep bringing it up she wants to talk about it whenever she can wherever she can because she hopes it helps girls out there in the future It just blows my mind because if people had listened and done a proper investigation into Jung Jun Young the first time in 2016 when all this came up publicly, the stuff at Burning Sun might have been prevented completely. Because Sungri didn't open that club. Let me see. Wait, when did he open that club? When did Burning Sun open? February 23rd, 2018. <laughs> wow, this club was open a year. <laughs> but sorry, it's not funny. That's all. I'll probably do a video like this every six months or once. Like I said, I'm gonna keep bringing it up. I don't want nobody to forget about this. Thanks for watching if you did. I'm sorry if this was a bit of a damper. Um, again, if you want to learn Korean, I highly, highly recommend you checking out the link in the description, howtostudykorean.com. Use the code LESSON3, get $5 off until July 31st. Everything's already on sale. Get another $5 off. You guys know me. When is the last time I did a sponsorship on this channel? I think this will really help you guys. If you really want to get good at Korean, if you want to understand it fundamentally, if you want to be able to speak it and listen to it, I highly recommend it. So thank you so much for watching. If you did, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Annyeong!